Written and directed by Damien McCarthy, Odyssey revolves around the brutal murder of Danny Timmis. One year later, her twin sister Darcy tries to uncover the truth of her murder at the scene of the crime, with a little help from an intriguing creation. Odyssey, Odyssey, Odyssey. Why have I chosen to talk about Odyssey as part of my month of horror? I wanted to tackle something spooky made here in Ireland. And Odyssey was the ideal choice, because for a start, it's new. Two, it's made here in County Cork, where I'm from. And number three, it's been getting a nice reception thus far, and I wanted to take the time to talk about it because, put simply, it's excellent. And yeah, a slight smidge of bias is involved as writer-director Damien McCarthy is from Cork, like myself. So I see nothing wrong with acknowledging him as a fine representative in the sphere of Irish horror storytelling. But my sentiments on the movie were earned. Really earned. Because I really enjoyed Odyssey. First thing I really liked about this movie from the get-go was that, well, okay, let's set the scene first. We get to see Danny before she got killed. The cinematography, editing, pacing, and performances immediately sold the atmosphere and tension well. The character Olin is trying to get inside the house, and Danny has to make a choice on letting him in or not. Just as she's about to make said choice, boom! <laughs> title comes up, fast forward one year later. Structurally, it's a sound move to withhold the rest of that information. Because as the movie is progressing, that's what was on my mind. I was like, okay, she is dead, but I didn't get to see what happened in between her having to make that choice and her death. What happened in between? I really liked this. It's a nice hook and a substantial thread that the movie organically sustains throughout. The second thing that I liked about her... Keep that gummel. Far away from me, please. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Fucking look at this wooden bayeen. This is another effectively simple hook the movie has to its advantage. This wooden figure isn't just there as some kind of set dressing. Nope. It has a purpose to the narrative. But literally, this thing appearing in any frame, doing nothing, actually nothing. It is super eerie. Whether it's in the foreground of a shot or the background of a shot, it's very unsettling. To elaborate on why it's in the movie would be ruining the joy of seeing what happens on a first viewing. But I love this design, and it fulfills its dual purpose extremely well. Third thing I liked about Odyssey, the acting. Caroline Bracken, who plays both Danny and Darcy, she's amazing. I actually didn't realize it was her playing them both, she manages to realize the twins as distinct personalities. Aside from the obvious difference being that Darcy is blind, the rest of the behavioral and speech changes are subtle, but still distinct. Darcy is a very likable protagonist. She has a unique connection with her sister that gives way to the more supernaturally leaning element of the story. But as she's settling into this house where the grisly murder took place, her suspicion of who or what was responsible starts coming to fruition more and more, and Bracken does a stellar job at conveying that, as well as her sense of humour. She's likeable and clearly driven, and sometimes she's weird, but purposefully weird. Her waning sense of trust as the story goes on doesn't come from an irrationally constructed place. You understand why. It is a testament to Bracken's ability to lead, and effectively, she led. Darcy is the focal point, but that doesn't undermine the impact everyone else has. Who the characters are and what they do in the present moment, even if the script doesn't give them as much depth or backstory, it's important that the acting is believable enough that you don't worry about that. And Gwilym Lee, Caroline Menton, Tyke Murphy, Steve Wall and company did a really nice job. The characters also felt very real to me. They feel like people I'd actually bump into on the street when I'm out for a walk. On the note of scares, Oddity has a couple of insanely effective ones. There is one in particular, however, that actually got my voice involved. So let me clarify. This is how I typically react to jump scares. Now you see, my voice never gets involved. The vocal folds never meet. It's just breath. There is one jump scare in Oddity, however, that made me go... I jumped, and my vocal folds met. 
I cannot remember the last time that that has happened, and that is something that I am going to remember this movie fondly for. And that's it. This movie's sense of atmosphere and tension is beautifully crafted, but it's also effectively paced. Odyssey runs at an hour and 38 minutes, which is the optimal amount of time to tell the story. Big kudos to editor Brian Philip Davis on playing a critical role in preserving that pace. It's a movie that immerses you in its atmosphere, but more importantly, you're immersed in this story. I wanted to see where it went. I wanted to see how these characters unfolded. The script very cleverly sets up its mystery with these intriguing hooks. What choice did Danny make that evening? How did she die? Who killed her? What is this wooden figure going to do? Where did it come from? Why does Darcy own such a horrifying looking thing? It stimulated such curiosity in me. I had these questions that I was hoping the movie would follow through on, and again, no spoilers, it does follow through. How it does so is for ye to experience, not for me to spoil. But I was very impressed. Very impressed by what McCarthy and company pulled off here. In terms of critiques, I honestly can't think of anything. The intentions behind the story are to entice, intrigue, and to terrify. And in that respect, this was very, very successful. If you're looking for a fresh bit of horror to consume this Halloween, I highly recommend Odyssey. Ardar Damien, Ardar. Agashin Shin, Kiyik Meshif Sakei Kamanala.